Alright, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Papa News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Papa. Grandma watch Papa's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. So today's video is brought to you courtesy of Infinity Dream Liquor Palace. They are located at shop number one at Imperial Plaza. 93 Great George Street in Savannah Lamar and at the Rainbow Plaza in Hopewell in the parish of Anova. At Infinity Dream Liquor Palace, they don't deal with knockoffs. You will get liquors from Infinity Dream that you will not get anywhere else in Western Jamaica. Trust me when I tell you that. They have white Hennessy. They have all the Crown Royals that you can think of and a lot more. Just call them at 876-724-8228. That's 876-724-8228. They also do consignment. So if you are keeping a party and you want liquor and consignment, all you need is a bill, your ID, and a reference letter. And then you check with Infinity Dream. Ensure that you check with them for all your good stuffs. Now, as promised, today, our in-house lawyer is Mr. Lambert Johnson. If you have any question that you would want Mr. Johnson to answer, just send us a WhatsApp message. 876-343-1034. That's 876-343-1034. Or if you want to speak with Mr. Johnson directly, or if you want to set up an appointment to speak to him, keep watching. His numbers will be posted. Remember to like and share the video from now. So, let's ask the lawyer. Good evening, Sir Johnson. How are you doing, sir? I am very well. <laughs> yeah, man. We missed yeah, out. Yeah, man. We missed out two. To yeah, we missed out two weeks, but it was un unavoidable. But here we are again. So. Sir so Johnson, we started out and we, we, we had long promised to talk about wills. And, um, well, I have one or two questions about wills. But we need, because a lot of persons are concerned, you know. So I want you to tell us, the, 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 tell us something about wills that we need to know, we, the general public. All right. So on the last occasion that we were here and I discussed wills generally, um, that a will is a written document. Mm -hmm in which you place your express wishes mm -hmm. as to how your estate should be divided when you die. Yes. Because with this will, you are able to make specific or give specific directions as, as to what is to be done. Yes. So, of course, as I said previously, for a will to be valid, it must be in writing. The person must have the capacity to make a will, meaning it was the 18 and over. Okay. It must be signed by the person who is making it in the presence of two or more witnesses. But usually we use two witnesses. Yes. Um, usually, preferably both present at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it is to be noted that those witnesses do not need to know what is in the will. Oh. All they're doing is to sign to say, yes, we can confirm that this is your will and you signed it in our presence. So you don't have to tell them what is in your will unless you feel comfortable doing so. I think there is some value to be added. Okay. And of course, as I said previously, you need an executor for your will, preferably someone who is younger. Yes. And please advise them that they are going to be the executor. Don't let it become as a surprise. Okay. After you die. Okay. They told that they are told that they are the executor of your estate because it is, it is a great responsibility. Yes. And there are some persons who are not very good at carrying out these duties. Okay. Also, I advise you to make sure you get someone of the greatest in Integrity. To be the executor. To be executor. Okay. Because they are no entitled to gather your estate. Mm -hmm. And if you are not careful, they will gather your estate. Just an example, 
and they will, and let's say there's a family house mm-hmm. and there's a son or a child living there, they might then decide that, you know what, for my purposes, I'm going to sell the house oh. and I'll share the money among the children. Oh. Then this clearly was not what the, the, the person who died, the testator, would have intended. Yes. Um, so they are doing this because they know that when they sell the house or the property, mm-hmm. monies will come to them. And then when the money is coming into their hand, they suddenly tell you that there are all sorts of expenses that are to be paid. And they might receive $10 million for the house. And suddenly you find up to half of what the house was sold for being paid. Out. Right, we have to pay the lawyer. We have yes. to pay the tax. Um, there are expenses that are incurred doing this. No. Oh. Make sure the person having as the executor is trustworthy. In fact, my primary recommendation would be if the persons to whom you are given the property are able to mm-hmm. make them their own executor. Oh, that was going to ask. Oh. Okay. Okay. So the person who's getting the benefit of the, of the property or the estate can be their executor, their own executor. Absolutely nothing is wrong with that. And it makes perfect sense. And of course, as I said before, anyone who is getting a benefit in a, under a will should never stand as a witness. Okay. Because what that does is the gift they are getting mm-hmm. from that will becomes invalid. Yes. And falls into falls back into the estate. But the will is still good. It's just that they lose their gift. Oh. Oh. Yes. It's never recommended. Extremely poor practice for a person who's getting a benefit. To, to be a witness. Okay. Uh, I, need, I need to clarify find out some. When somebody writes a will, Sir Johnson, what does that what does the person do with that will? Well uh, when I prepare wills, I usually prepare at least two. Yes. So the person who's making it, he can leave one of the attorney who keep it in confidence or he can take both copies and go lock in his safe, put in his private drawer, yes, or hide it because he is not obliged to share the contents of his will with anyone. Okay, okay. But of course, it has to be balanced against being yes. too secretive, so your family members can know what you own and what to do if and when you pass on. Okay. So. I make a very strong recommendation that all persons, when you are able to, once you own anything, yes, money, land, car, furniture, and you want it to go to a certain person, mm-hmm. make your will. Or if you can give it to them in your lifetime, that is always an option. The greatest difficulty now mm-hmm. comes around when you die without making a will. Yes. Because what that means is that the law takes over and decides what becomes of your estate. Mm-hmm. And the particular law that deals with that is called the Interstate Estate and the Property Charges Act. Yes. And it sets out exactly who is to get your estate. So it's now the, the, the state that decides who gets what? And not you? Yes. <laughs> oh. And why would you allow yes. something as impersonal as a piece of law to decide how your estate is shared when you work all your life, acquired your wealth, you know the needs of your specific family members, you know that some might deserve more than others. Yes. Um, you might know that there are some family members who, because of the way they treated you while alive, mm-hmm. deserve to be cut out and should be cut out of your will. Yes. There might be persons who in the usual scheme of things wouldn't get the benefit. Mm-hmm. But because they treated you so well during your lifetime, you wish to give them a benefit. Yes, but yes. But if you don't do that, they will not get it. So the first person who the law will recognize is spouse. Okay. The word spouse is primarily refers to wife. Yes. But the reality is once you live five, five years, years or more mm-hmm. with someone, they can be classified as spouse. A spouse. And it, and it must be made absolutely clear that it is a single man living with a single woman. So, if Mr. B, for mm-hmm. example, is married, but he's separated.
separate it from his wife and he gold is done with another woman or it could be a lady yes and they die that person never becomes a spouse because the man is married and the law recognizes it one spouse oh and that can be a setup for a, a gigantic fight yes after you're gone especially if you know your wife has no right in your estate your new partner has children for you and the wife comes in and she says by law i'm entitled to if it's just one child she'll be entitled to three quarters of your estate if mm. there are two or more children then she's entitled to only half oh and this is going to be done to like the furniture and the yes. other um chattels that you might have okay so, surviving spouse is first and foremost okay then after after spouse you have children yes and after children so if you have wife and children it stops there okay. but if you have spouse and no children but parents the parents are entitled to one third of your estate after spouse children and parents parents yes then you, you go to brothers and sisters of the whole oh brother. yes yes brothers and sisters of the half blood if there are none yes then you go to grandparents then you go to aunt, uncles and aunts mm -hmm. of the whole blood yes and uncles and aunts of the half blood oh and if there are none of these there's a nice latin phrase <laughs> it's bona vacantia vacantia yes okay and so and what that essentially means government get all that you work for all wow. your life wow and who wants that to happen wow so make your way yes yes and i must alert you again there's one important thing i must say if you make a will mm -hmm. and then you get married that marriage automatically revokes the will and so you should take steps to make another one make a new will oh so that's the broad framework within which we operate yes and the issue or the matter of what we call deadless has caused families to turn against each yeah, other yeah man kill each other yes yes mm -hmm. and there's a recent news item about three members of a family yeah in clarendon yes yes who, who were killed yes just because of such of this so so because situations such as this so to avoid the unpleasantness and the division in the family and what i would say and when you make your will make it known that you have a will yes because there are persons who will destroy the will for their own purpose or will seek to do a fraudulent will yes giving themselves everything so it is always wise to tell the, the beneficiaries yes there is a will where it is to be found mm -hmm. so that no one person can get the benefit of the estate when other persons are entitled um so after someone has passed you see and there's a will what's the proceed what's the process to what does that the executor do with the will after that well the a tradition has developed where the will is read to the beneficiaries there is actually no requirement of that in law yes what is that tradition that is especially the family members want it it is done done by the attorney mm -hmm. or the executor of the estate and so after that is done then steps are taken to probate the will okay uh, and so far as that you need a death certificate the requisite documentation um is prepared yes and sent to the court and then you'll come back with a grant of probate and it is with this document now that you can go to the bank and say I want the money from mommy's or daddy's account. So this is sent uh, to the parish court or to the Supreme Court? It depends on the size of the estate. Oh. But oh. most times it is done through the Supreme Court because mm -hmm. currently the Supreme Court process is a little faster. Faster. Oh, I see. I see. And then now what attorneys will do if they want to be diligent yes. is once they have that probate in hand, mm -hmm. they will write all the financial institutions to find out if they have any money on account yes. for this person who passed. You'd be surprised how much money is languishing in banks. Yeah. And if only they, if this was re requested of the bank, yes. it would have come to the estates of the beneficiaries. 
yes, yes, yes. Um, I said somebody sent me a question. I know, I know, I will, I will can't be rewritten, but I want you to answer it. The person said, um, the person is living abroad, and she's saying that her house was will to her. A bar is on the same land. Um, it was will to her brother. So, so it's a, it's a land house will to her. The bar will to her brother. She said years ago before the owner died. Well, the owner died 2019. She told her brother to turn the business into a living space, but the brother didn't do that. So, well, she's saying it's only one entrance, one entrance to enter the property itself. So whether you're going into the bar or you're going into the house, it's one property. The person has the land title and the person said that she's paying the taxes. She's asking if it's true that she can get her name on the land title. I don't know how that can be done. And when she gets her name on the, on the land title, if she will be able to rewrite the will. What is your answer to the person? Well, I will start off by saying that the only person who can write and rewrite their will yes. is what we call the testator. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Because, because there's a term attorneys like to use. A will is an ambulatory document. Okay. You can change it every year or every month if you so desire. Well, it's only you can change it. Yes, yes. Anybody else who changes it, changes it mm -hmm. that's fraud. Yes. And they can receive very heavy prison sentences for something of that nature. That is how, that is how seriously the, the courts regard it. Now, there are a couple questions that spring to mind. Mm -hmm. Like, how long has this brother been there? And there are some other issues that might not be strictly legal, but more of a social and family nature. Yes. Um, the brother is living there. Does mm -hmm. he no regard this, though he should not, mm -hmm. as his place of abode? Does the person living overseas have other property mm -hmm. or is in need? So I am not trying to make, an, make a, a case for the brother to say that he's entitled to his sister's property, mm -hmm. far from it. But sometimes this family member to contemplate, I have this right in my hand. Yes. Do I want to exercise my rights and exclude and cause some dislocation to a family member? Mm -hmm. Especially if this is something that you can live without. Because I'm sure the brother having lived there for so many years, he is at the bar. I can bet he regards this as his castle. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, so where I'm going is these are circumstances that are ripe mm -hmm. for disharmony, discord, and possible bloodshed. Because, because the other question that I was going to ask is somebody is saying that his father made a will and the father died and leaving a piece of land to that person. And he's now saying that his brother has stolen half acre of the land. Well, the question was vague, but the person was asking what can be done seeing that the brother had stolen half acre of the land. Well, or a quarter, you know, or a quarter lawyer, acre. La, la, lawyers always say you can't steal land because it's... <laughs> it, <laughs> yes, part, yes. Part, part of larceny uh -huh. that you did take and carry away. Carry away, yes, yes, yes. And you can carry away land. But I know that the intention is that this brother more than likely has captured... Captured it, yes, yes. A, a quarter acre. Yes. Maybe he's dominating it as... His own. And um, exercising all the rights of ownership and possession. Yes. No, to give them a comprehensive answer, one that I'll be satisfied with, I'd have to see the will. Okay. So, so I can first and foremost decide whether <laughs> or not the will was properly executed. Okay. All right. So if it is properly executed and the land was properly given in the will, yes. it belongs to him. And so he will be entitled once he probates the will to take his brother to court to get him off the property. Mm -hmm. Of course, what is unclear from here is how long the brother has been on the land. Yes. Because if the brother has um, stole or began squatting on that land, mm -hmm. piece of land more than 12 years ago and nothing was done yes. to get him off mm -hmm. or to alert him that he's a squatter, then squatter's rights or what we call adverse possession yes. might come into play. Okay. Okay. But once again, I would have to 
look at the social element yes. and the family side. If you are able to enforce your strict legal right, do you really want to enforce it against, against your, your brother? brother? Yes. yes. So that's a decision that he has to make. And if he sure he wants to do it, then by all means. Go ahead. <laughs> if you are not prepared to go to the full length to enforce your right, mm -hmm. then you can consider the following. A, give your brother a lease. He yes. pays for the piece of spot that he's occupying. Yes. B, sell it to him. Or C, just give it to him outright and cut it off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You cut off the land, you cut off your brother. Yes, yes, yes. Your choice. Yes. So a will cannot stand that on its own unless it's probated. Well, no. what? Okay. It, it cannot stand on its own, but it, it has some value, you know. Okay. So for, for instance, when someone dies, the executor can go to the bank. Yes. And ask if you have money and how much. Yes. Uh, most bankers will need to say, but you can't ask for that. Yes. You're not on it. But because you're executor, the law actually makes provisions for this particular aspect of it. And the bank is actually obliged to, so, at the very least, yes. tell you that there's an account there. So for an executor, how would somebody prove to the bank that he or she is the executor for a will? What, what, what? You, take, you, take a, you take a copy of the will and maybe the original will for the bank to, oh. to, to verify. Yes, yes. And why the banks would be cautious about giving out information or giving the money on the on the face of the will, they can never be sure that this is the last will. Because yes. Every will you write is the last one. And makes the ones before that null and, null and void. void. Yes, 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 yes. And so the last will. Yes. But the last will that is properly done up and executed, that is of value. So probating a will takes time, Sir Johnson, near the Supreme Court? Like, what, what are we talking about? Um, a year or? Well, uh, the current Chief Justice has been trying to have the system become more efficient. efficient. Uh -huh. And so on the website, you will see an estimate of about six months. Okay. Oh, but the reality is sometimes it actually goes up to a year. Okay. Uh, well, I think you have covered a whole heap. I don't know if you have anything else you want to. You think you might have missed out? So, <laughs> even though a will is made, yes. if you feel that the person who died had an obligation mm -hmm. to maintain you or used to maintain you, you can actually challenge the will to the extent that a provision should be made in the will for you. Hold on. Well, you know, uh, Sir Johnson, so you're saying that if somebody made a will, somebody can come and challenge that will? Even if... No, but it, no, it has to be someone who was entitled, you know. Yeah, I know, I know. Will. Or somebody who feels they were entitled. Yes. So yes. For instance... Yes. If you made a will and you are an elderly mother who you'd assist in buying in buying her medication. Yes. And for some reason you forgot to prepare in the will. Oh. So you could take that support. Okay. Um the last thing I wish to say tonight is there's a term we call the residual clause. Yes. I like to call it the cleanup clause. Uh huh. So after the will is made, persons are known to get other assets. Mm -hmm. Work and get additional money. They might buy a new piece of land. They yeah. might buy um, a new car. Yes. They might be lucky and win the lottery and have tons of money. Mm -hmm. Or they might have someone will something for them. So they have, they get new things that mm -hmm. were not around when the will was written. So in those cases, if you make no mention of it, then it falls into intestacy, meaning. Mm -hmm. The, the rules about wife and then yes, children, children and, and yes, yes. But if you put a clause, the cleanup clause that say the rest and the residue oh. of my estate, mm -hmm. whatsoever and wherever situated, mm -hmm. I give to so and so, that covers it. So it's best then, it's best if somebody is gonna write, write a will, they consult with a lawyer because the ordinary man in the street wouldn't know all of this, right? Yes, and yeah. there's a case, an old case out of England where a gentleman left his son was married Yes. and the daughter-in-law was quite a nice lady and so he made a specific request to her mm -hmm. but in the will he said to my son's wife I give £10,000 so and everybody know who that was yes. with the passage of time the son and that wife separated 
Oh. And then now had a new wife. Wow. <laughs> yes. And the will was taken at face value. said to my, my son's wife. wife. He didn't specify who the... Oh, I see. Yes. So at all times, yes. be as specific as you can. Okay. Don't just say to my beloved son, <laughs> unless it's one son. You know? Yes, yes. Well, Sir Johnson, thanks a lot. And um, next week, I'm sure we're going to cover some of the topics. And... Um, yeah, man. Thanks a lot. You're most welcome, <laughs> and I look forward to providing this kind of information. Yes, sir. To your very many listeners. I have been getting some calls, and I'm happy to assist. Yes, sir. In yes. any way. Yeah, man. I get some calls, way. too, and I, and I refer them. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. No respect, man. All, All right. right. So I wish for you and your listeners, your, sub, your many, many subscribers. <laughs> yes, sir. A safe rest of the day. All right, Take sir. Take care until we meet again. All right, sir. Blessed, sir, Johnson. No respect. Blessed love, everybody.